Belcazar, Allison said, eyeing the unicorn's tail. It was long and white furred with a tuft at the end like a lion's. Uh, so if I help you get the baby unicorns back, this is all going to stop, right? I don't need to be hearing cats talking. Who does? The unicorn said. <laughs> <laughs> Rather evasively, Allison felt. This way, he added, and trotted across Columbus Circle to take Broadway downtown. Otto Penzler lived near Gramercy Park in a neat three-story brownstone with an honest-to-God front yard and fresh flowers in the window boxes. Belcazar jumped the ironwork fence in a single spectacularly graceful leap and trotted to a side window. Allison rolled her eyes and just went through the unlocked front gate. <laughs> What's the plan here exactly? Belcazar touched the window with his horn. The latches on the inside slid by themselves and the window rose smoothly open. You climb through, let me in the front door, we find the baby unicorns and get out, hopefully before the wizard even wakes up, he said. I hate to break it to you, Allison said, but he's not keeping them in there. How would you know, Belcazar demanded. Allison pointed inside the window. If he blew that much money on hardwood floors, I do not think he is letting a bunch of baby horses walk on them. <laughs> He's got to have them somewhere else. <coughs> Around back, in fact, there was a padlocked cellar door. Belcazar backed away from the lock with a snort. Cold iron, he said unhappily. Would it help if it was warm iron? Allison said, I have a lighter. Very funny, not, Belcazar said. That must be where he's gone. He looked at her expectantly. The guy in the cash register at the 24-hour hardware store had a vague expression on his face while he handed Allison the crowbar and she sadly watched him put one of her last $5 bills into the register. Belcazar was standing just inside the door. He had somehow managed to cram himself in between the folding ladders and the mops. If I get locked up for this, you are so busting me out, Allison said, working the crowbar into the lock and leaning on it. The padlock popped open like a gunshot, and she looked up and around to make sure no one had gotten curious and stuck their head out of a window to see her breaking into some nice upstanding wizard's cellar in the dead of night. I'll hire you a goblin lawyer, Belkazar said. Hurry up before it gets light. Allison was still careful opening the doors, keeping it as quiet as she could. Goblin lawyers did not sound super reliable to her. <laughs> she wasn't sure what she was expecting. This all still seemed unreal, the street lamp casting Belcazar's shadow with a tapering horn on the ground next to her. But you could get used to pretty much anything if you gave it enough time. Eating in soup kitchens, sleeping on the street, <laughs> unicorns, evil wizards' basements. It was turning out to be easier to break into than getting into the high school weight room after hours. The doors opened on a broad staircase going down into black with the annoying kind of fancy steps that were so long you had to take an extra step before you got to the edge, but not long enough to take two extra steps, so you were always going down on the wrong foot. She couldn't see the bottom, even after they had ducked all the way in. Belcazar's horn glowed white as they went down, a sort of cool, unforgiving pearly light. The walls were weird and smooth and curved like they were auditioning for an Escher painting. It seemed like they were trying to bend away from the light of the horn. Twenty steps down, with the dark cornflower blue rectangle of open sky getting further away than Allison wanted it, a rotten stink started getting closer. Is this going to end up in the sewers or something? Ah, oh, no, it's a troll, Belcazar said. They hadn't quite stepped off the stairs, but they'd bottomed out in a small antechamber, pretty much just a landing with the door at the other end. Allison didn't see what Belcazar was talking about until the big lumpy pile of rock by the door sat up, unfolded concrete gray arms and legs, and blinked little black pebble eyes at them. Yum, the troll said, and came lumbering towards them. Uh, Allison said, backing away rapidly. Belcazar just stood there, though, and the troll got yanked up a foot short of the stairs by the chain around its neck. Yum, it said unhappily, stretching out its thick, stumpy arms at them uselessly. They won't stay put unless you chain them, the unicorn said to Allison, a little loftily. Thanks for letting me know, she said. So now what? Can you kill this thing? No, the unicorn said. I thought you guys could take out dragons. Uh, well, Belcazar had pawed the ground. 
Theoretically, I could kill it, but if it grabbed onto me, it's stronger, and it's not like there's a lot of room to maneuver in here. Well, I don't think it's going to let us buy if we just ask nicely, Allison said. Yep, the troll said immediately. Let you buy. Go ahead. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it backed up against the wall and waved a hand at the passageway. It even tried a hopeful smile, full of teeth like broken rocks. Nice try, Allison said. Aw, the troll said. <laughs> You're a soldier, Belkazar said. Haven't you got any better ideas? Yeah, absolutely. I'll go upstairs, call around, and find someone in Manhattan with a grenade launcher, and we'll come right back. <laughs> Allison wondered what a real Marine would do. Probably shoot it with their gun a real Marine would be carrying and know how to use, which wasn't a lot of help in their current situation. Riddle game, the troll said. I get wrong, you go by. Will he stick to that, Allison said to Belkazar. No, Belkazar said. <laughs> His sides heaved out in a deep breath. I knew I should have let Talmazan do this, he muttered, and lowered his horn, his hindquarters bunching awkwardly on the steps. Wait a second, hang on, Allison said. The troll's hands were the size of basketballs and looked like they'd been carved out of solid rock. She didn't really want to see what they'd do to Belkazar if he got close enough to touch. I thought you didn't have any better ideas, Belkazar said, raising his head up again. And Allison didn't at first, but then she said to the troll, Are you only up for dinner if it talks? Or would you be okay with chicken? The troll brightened right up. Big Mac, it said. <laughs> awesome, Allison said, sighing. That isn't going to be more than an appetizer for that thing, Belkazar said, when they came out of the McDonald's with the burger in a sack. <laughs> that is why we're going to stuff it full of crushed Benadryl, Allison said. <laughs> <laughs> That wiped out the rest of her cash, but the troll bounced right up when Allison tossed at the burger. It spent about half an hour eating it slowly and lingering, lingeringly, one tiny bite at a time and licking its lips after each one. Then it ate the fries, the wrapper, the bag, said, yum, and fell over snoring. <laughs> Allison and Belkazar stood warily, but the troll really did seem to be asleep. Wait here, Belkazar said, and edged across the floor towards it. He tapped the troll with his horn three times. Light went rippling down from the horn, washing over the troll's body. And its skin went pale like concrete drying out on fast forward. It almost seemed to settle down into itself. The arms and legs and head curled in closer until the separations turned into nothing but faint cracks in a lumpy rock. Belkazar snorted. Only wizards would go around trying to turn rocks into living things and think that was a good idea. Now come on, let's find the baby unicorns and get out of here. 